right, we'll give a couple more minutes just for anybody who might be running late. Yeah, so all of these, Bob, that I do, I'm trying to like, do they have something in common or are they just so obscure they don't have anything in common? <laughs> Hi, Emily. Hey. Hello. We hope your mic starts working because we like people to chime in with their thoughts and whatever, but if it's not, we can use the chat function too. Okay, she's gonna get a different laptop. Hey, Bill. Hey, can you hear me? Yep, can hear you, can see you. All righty. All right, so I'm gonna just wait a couple minutes. Um, Emily's trying to get her mic working. I think they're switching laptops. So we'll wait in case anybody else jumps on. Start about 8.05. Everybody having fun? Yeah. I'm sure pretty much everybody, we kind of went wherever, where everybody's from, and I'm pretty sure we're mostly all snowed in where we're all yeah. at. <laughs> to cross. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of snow. Um, another 15, 20 years, it'd be okay to have some more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't love it, but I had fun with it today. Right, let me get this cap. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. Stop. Is that some animal? I had to get, so anytime I'm in here trying to record my cats scratch outside the door, and I just got to remember to bring them in with me. So. Oh, there's Bob's kitty. I have one that looks like that too. All right, guys, so we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to start with this Westland single malt. Um, go ahead and get it poured. Yep. <laughs> And this one's from Westland Distillery in Washington State. It's 92 proof, aged for a minimum of 36 months, and it's a five malt mash bill. So what are you guys getting on the nose for that? Very sweet. Mm-hmm. It almost smells sugary. Yeah, I get like a fruity sugar. Yeah. I was going to say blackberry. Oh, yeah, blackberry is good. Pyramid chewing gum. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're kind of as like a little minty on the back end. Juicy fruit. Yeah. Maybe juicy fruit. All right, let's go ahead and try it. It's still kind of sweet on the finish for that. I get real excited when people's pets show up too. <laughs> They're always welcome. <laughs> he loves me to speak. <laughs> All right, what do we think about this one, guys? It's, it's good. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty much on like two sides. I love this. Mm -hmm. 
It's a little bit spicy, right? A little spicy, yeah. It almost has like a rye spice in it and there's no rye in it. Mm -hmm. Also, um, save a little bit in your bottle or your glass because we'll come back to it. We'll let it sit while we uh, walk through the other ones and mm -hmm. see if it opens up any. And so this is an all barley um, mash bill. It's Washington Select Pale Malt, Munich Malt, Extra Special Malt, Pale Chocolate Malt, and Brown Malt. Did anybody get any chocolate flavor out of it? I didn't, and I usually do when they use a chocolate malt. What are we doing now? Still on the Westland right yeah, now. Not, not a lot. No. What are you drinking? The palate's not bad on it, but uh, I, I like the nose a lot better. I did too. Yeah, that nose was like so sugary and sweet and fruity, and then like the palate just didn't come around for that. All right. Well, let's let this one sit a little bit. See if it gets a little bit better while we work through our others. Should we leave it open? Yeah, leave it open, or um, if you have multiple glasses, just leave it in the glass. Right. And then next up, we're going to do the old 55, the white corn whiskey. <clears throat> right. Our dog, he's licking the laptop, even though there's nothing on there. <laughs> he just wants to be included too. It's okay. <laughs> You want to have like so this one straight up corn it just smells like corn and it should <laughs> maybe i just can't stop maybe i don't have as much experience with various types of whiskey so you know i have some exposure <laughs> thanks to my dad eric galba over there um but i i I think maybe I'm just more of a fruity person. Like I'm not used to this corn smell. Right, yeah. And if it's a darker whiskey, it's gonna have different smells because of the barrels and the aging. This one's unaged. So he just pretty much got it off the still and bottled it. Um, it's the same mash bill he would use to make bourbon with. It just, it's only the heart cuts. He cut it, bottled it, and just called it a white corn whiskey. All right, let's try it. If you didn't like the nose, you're not going to like the taste either. Right. I happened to swallow when you said hard, and it's like, wow, that's a strong, like, yeah. <laughs> when, it, when you first taste it, there's, it doesn't have as much presence, and then it's like, oh, hey, I'm here. Yeah, like on that back end, it's like, oh, it just kind of hits you. Yeah. Um, but for just being like, I don't know, if you want to call they it do a white dog. Girl spin too. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it's only 80 proof, so it's not coming off super hot, but it does kind of hit you on that back end. Yeah, it, it has aftershock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's real smooth. Yeah, no, I think it's super smooth. It's a great mouthfeel. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like this one a lot. Of course, yeah. I know what it turns into. So. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. I like it when it comes out of the barrels, too. <laughs> <laughs> it turns into that <laughs> yeah so i just think for being you know like a white corn whiskey it's not bad it's one of the more drinkable ones out there a lot of them are just rough from the get-go and i think this one's smooth and nice i think that a lot of it comes from the experience of having had all these other whiskeys because mm -hmm. I mean, I can't speak for pre, but I think at least for me, um, we don't have as much experience with this kind of to compare it to. So mm -hmm. it's like, I feel like at least I have a better appreciation for it comparing everyone else's, like, oh, it's smooth. Okay. I can now put it in the smooth category rather than mm -hmm. 
Right. Yeah. And it comes with it. I think it definitely comes with experience of just learning, like that's the flavor profile, like from that distillery or this one, or it tastes like this one fruit I ate this one time. <laughs> so people, you know, you gather your life experiences and kind of put those into your whiskey experience too. Um, do you have a favorite, favorite like aged whiskey or bourbon? Elijah um, Craig, the single barrel. Yeah. So if you kind of like set it up next to that to be like, oh, this it's missing all those things because that was in a barrel. So this is just like the really simple pre-barreled version of a good bourbon, soon to be good bourbon. Got a really long finish on it. Yeah, it does. And the pepper starts to come out the longer it, uh, it sits in your mouth. Mm-hmm. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, how long does it take to like become bourbon? Um, so if this was aged, there's no aging minimum for bourbons, but Rick, do you know how long Jason, it's from, um, old 55 out of Indiana. Do you know how long Jason usually ages his like two years? Um, well, most of his stuff is a lot of his stuff is labeled as straight whiskey, which means it's a little, it, usually at least two years old. Yeah. His are, they're all really, really young whiskeys, whatever he's pulling out of barrels right now. Mm -hmm. But they're all really good. Yeah. All right. Let's let this one sit and we'll move on to that sugar lunch shine, the PB and J. And this one, I don't know what I expect out of this one. So <laughs> it'll be interesting. Oh, it's, I think. Wow. It really does smell like you know, butter and jelly. It does. It does. Definitely pink. <laughs> yeah, the color on this. I want you guys to see the color on it. It is. Yeah. I've never seen a whiskey this color. Like even for being a flavored whiskey, it's crazy looking. That is smooth. Yeah, it smells exactly what like peanut it? butter and jelly. Yeah. Screwball and Chambord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> See what it tastes like. So I get more jelly, more of the jelly grapey yeah. taste. Yeah. It's definitely it's definitely sugary. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like a lifesaver. <laughs> yes, it does. So do we like it or is it too, too sugary, too gimmicky? Sometimes you like grape Tylenol, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> that's it's what I also right. think it always like it. <laughs> Reminds me of some cold medicines I've had. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely true. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is one of those fun ones. Like if you've been to Gatlinburg and done the tastings I there, it's it's fun just to go through and just taste all the different flavors and it's not going to be like your true like real distillery experience but I think it's fun to see what they can make things taste like. So what's the additive to it that's giving it that? Uh... Um, because it's just a whiskey or it started as a moonshine and they can add whatever flavorings they want to. It'll just say natural or artificial flavorings and not give us a list of what they are. So mm -hmm. they can add flavorings to these. And their website did say to keep it in the freezer overnight and it brings out more of the peanut butter flavor. So I haven't tried that, but maybe you want to. I'm not sure that's desirable. <laughs> yeah. It's a little too too grapey for me, I think. Yeah, I think the it's very artificial flavor for some Yeah, too yeah. too too deep. <laughs> Brian, Brian puts in the chat, keep it in the freezer indefinitely. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it in the yard and forget where you want All right. advice. <laughs> Put it in the freezer indefinitely. <laughs> definitely has a novelty taste. I feel like 
you know, take a sip, pass it around to your friends in their own glasses, coronavirus, but you know, right. and then, uh, then call it a day, you know? <laughs> yeah, it kind of reminds me one of one, like, I probably would have loved this, like 21, 22 year old me would have loved this at like a friend's party or something. You'd be like, oh, that's so good. And then you get sick because it's like all sugar. <laughs> so. Try to turn a very young child into an alcoholic. <laughs> Whiskey for someone who doesn't like whiskey. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's still better than Fireball. <laughs> yeah. And, and still better than Screwball, probably, too. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we can set this one aside. Um, you might want to drink some water, drink something else, and we'll go back to this Westland that we started with. Kind of like clean your palate off from all that like sugary artificial stuff. You know, that word um, natural flavorings is really kind of misleading. Yes. I mean, one of the major flavoring agents comes from the anus of a beaver. Yeah. So I learned this. My brother years ago worked at a like food processing plant where they made artificial flavors. And he told me that. And I've never looked at that <laughs> packaging the same ever again. <laughs> <on anything. laughs> Camp. Uh, Tamworth Distilling up in New York did a whiskey with uh, the the beaver butt uh, flavoring. Man, how did yeah. that go for them? Uh, <laughs> they, and they sold it for like uh, seventy dollars for a three seven five, and they sold out everywhere because it was a gimmick. But um, I never got to try it, and I don't know that I want to. But yeah, Please, yeah. Yeah. that that oh, could yeah. be one. I could look for that and do just a. Uh, just to try it series, it's one whiskey, the Beaver Butt whiskey. <laughs> they have a, well, hey, well, McDude, they have a three pack. They, because they're a weird distillery, they have, uh, they do something with deer meat in their whiskey, and they do something with something called the corpse flower. Supposedly <laughs> a flower that smells horrible. I've heard and of so this they, flower, yeah. They have a three pack that you can buy on their website for like 200 bucks or something of these three disgusting sounding whiskeys. Okay, maybe I will look for those and that would be perfect for Halloween time. <laughs> the, the, the big question about the beaver butt is whoever discovered that? <laughs> that yeah. So don't you wonder about things where you're like, I guess it works, but how the heck did you find out that it works? What were you doing? <laughs> Danny Kennard. Buy it for Danny Kennard. <laughs> where do you go to buy these beaver butts anyway? Right. But I, mean, I, I hope it came from like the pioneer people when they like wasted nothing mm -hmm. and they're like, this part makes this. I hope that's how they found out. I don't really want to know how they found out. <laughs> yeah, I, I think someone just got really drunk and they were just like, let's try something new and then they found out a bit of what. <laughs> right, right. But it actually does go into a lot of natural flavored things, which is whatever I see that now, I'm like, I can't get this thought out of my head. <laughs> All right, well, into Westland that is not flavored with anything, so. That's good. Okay. Yeah, first one. Yep, so this one seemed to open up a lot while we let it sit. Definitely. This one got better while we left it there. The different thing about this is it doesn't come off as being 100% barley. Right. Because of all the different roasts that they use. Yeah, they found a good, a good mix of things to put in there to make it really drinkable. American malts are all over the map. You never know what to expect. Right. Right. Yeah. Sometimes they're stellar and sometimes they're they're a little disappointing. This one I think is pretty good though. This is good. Yeah. I'm yeah. Pleasantly surprised. Yeah. All right. Any new any new flavors or profiles we're getting out of this one? The nose got worse for me. I liked the nose a lot better before, and now it's it's not pleasant at all. But I think I like the palate 
better than I did before now. It's opened up a little bit, I guess. Yeah, I can agree with that. Like at first that nose was like real sugary and so sweet. And now it's just, the sweetness kind of went out of it. But the palate got better. And to me, it kind of tastes like a rye, just like a straight rye whiskey, but there's no rye in it. Yeah, it's got a lot of that, that you know, anise and rye, like, spice to it mm -hmm. that makes you kind of, yeah, if I did this blind without knowing, I would think that there was at least, like, 20% rye or something in there. Yeah, I would, too. Yeah, Okay, so better on the, the flavor that second time around for that one. All right, let's go back to this old 55 corn whiskey. See what it's done just sitting there. Like the nose hasn't changed, it's still corn. <laughs> you know, I was mistaken. Mm -hmm. They don't, he doesn't have, he doesn't have straight, straight on his label. It's missing an age statement, which means it's at least four years old. Okay. Age stuff. Okay. okay. It kind of smells like some kind of like strange hobby glue or something. That's what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> so like, probably like the alcohol volume in it, like <laughs> all the crafting supplies I have, there's probably a lot of alcohol in them. Do you know the mash bill on this one? Um, it's just his corn. I don't, but I know that it's the same mash ton he uses for their single barrel bourbon. Mm -hmm. Is it on that bottle, Rick? So you have that single barrel. Uh, no. He doesn't know. If you get to the sweet corn, I can tell you that's 100% sweet corn. Yeah. And this <laughs> one, um, he goes out of his way to do heart cuts only. So there's no heads or tails off of the still. Like he does, he's wastes a lot, but it's really good. And there's like no bitterness to it just because it's only that heart. It's only the sweet spot off the still. I know. And, and which is surprising because it's so oily. Like the mouthfeel is so like viscous, yeah. which, which normally you get from throwing some tails in, but just keeping all hearts. It, I mean, it's it's impressive. I like this a lot. Yeah, this one has a great mouthfeel. I love the way this one feels. Yeah, and like still flavor-wise, like for just a corn whiskey, like it's not like harsh. It's not, it's pleasant to drink. Yeah, this ends up turning into some really good bourbon. Mm -hmm. The single, I, I got a bottle of a single barrel here. It's about a oh, 110.8 proof instead of yeah. 80. Yeah, this one's just 80. But even them, I've had some of their single barrels too. And even at 110, like they don't drink like they're 110 from old 55. They're so smooth and just easy, easy to drink. And the barrels drank the 100% sweet corn, which is the most unique bourbon you'll ever drink. Mm -hmm. uh, comes in at 117.8. Yep. And I haven't had that one. Is it still like same profile, real easy to drink? Yeah. Okay. You yeah, tried it. Cool. You tried oh, it up did. at the store. I did it. try it out there, yeah. Yes, they did. When we went up there. there. Brian's kitty's doing. Hey, kitty. That's Remus. Oh. <laughs> full name. 
Okay, so let's go back to uh, <laughs> this peanut butter and jelly. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I would buy. Or if you really just did not like this one and you have um, extras of the first two, feel free to still drink those. <laughs> So somehow this one got more, more grapey sitting there. I didn't think that was possible. I feel like for me, it alternates between being grapey, but also more, at least more chocolatey than the one that's supposed to have chocolate in it. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, I don't get peanut butter at all, really. I get grape and chocolate. It tastes like a, like a grape Tootsie Pop. Oh yeah, Tootsie Pop. Yeah. 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 I, I get a, so anything that's like grape or cherry flavor, I immediately think cough syrup too. <laughs> the same for me. Mm. Now that you've mentioned the Tootsie Pop, I'm like tasting pure Tootsie Pop with cough syrup as in like a chase. <laughs> 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 Just, uh, dip your Tootsie Pops in some cough syrup, see what happens. <laughs> It tastes exactly like that chocolate raspberry yogurt I had earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so the flavors, so I don't get peanut butter at all out of this whatsoever. Just lots mm. of great. I don't get so much peanut butter, but like a little bit of like roasted peanut, like not, not the not the sweetness of peanut butter or the or the oiliness, um, but just like that that flavor you get from um, fresh roasted peanuts in particular, like the skins on them. Okay, like the I have no better word, but like the nuttiness of a peanut. Like I right. get what you're saying. Like I wish I had a better word for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this one's just like overly sweet, and I don't think it's enjoyable if you like actual like bourbons and whiskeys that aren't artificially flavored. I think it would be fun if I went to Gatlinburg and went on a tour and be like, oh yeah, let's try it. That's fun. But I don't really want to sit here and drink that. <laughs> so this is Sugar Lens. Is it safe to assume that it's, um, it's moonshine based? Yes. Yeah. Sugar Lens Shine. It is one of their moonshine bases. Okay. And Brian just said in the chat, Traverse City is the only cherry flavored whiskey I've had that doesn't taste like cough syrup. And he's right. Oh, yeah. Traverse City infuses their bourbons with their cherries that are grown right there. And those are the only ones I can tolerate in a cherry flavored whiskey. It's really good. It is good. They did a good job with that. Their barrel, the barrel strength cherry whiskey is really, really good. Exactly. I have... I have that coming up in a July tasting too, the barrel proof Traverse City. So look out for that one. Awesome. All right, guys. So let's vote. Let's vote our favorites for the night. Whose favorite was the, the first one we had, the Westland single malt? Let's count hands. Okay, whose favorite was the corn whiskey? I have to retaste to remind myself. <laughs> And then um, it was, was this last one anybody's favorite? <laughs> I won't kick you out. <laughs> okay, so I think we had a clear winner. This Westland single malt seemed to be uh, the favorite of the evening. Yep. Yeah, so that one's interesting just being like a full malted barley. <laughs> like Brian said, I'm not mad that I tasted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but malted barley this one I think tastes most like like a regular bourbon could or would so that was a really good one yeah yeah and then I almost wish I would have um just done like a corn whiskey or a moonshine thing with this old 55 so it could compare like stand up next to things that it's more comparable to like other people's white dogs yeah but this is a white dog this isn't a moonshine and there is a difference that's true, yes. This is good, but I prefer moonshine over this. Right. 
So if you're going to do a comparison, then you need to compare this with other white dogs. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I could do find like other white dogs we could do a tasting with because I think this would stand up to literally anybody's white dog and come out on top. So do we, we've got a moonshine coming up, don't we? Or at least it's, it's in the planning. Yes. Yeah, I think it's in the planning stages still. Cool. Yeah, or if, if you check out the virtual bourbon page, it may still, it may be up. I'm not sure yet on that. Because, you know, Steve gets so many things going. I'm like, when is that? What are we doing? <laughs> so, but it's definitely out there in the works to be out there. Cool. So the process of making all of them is different, like the way mm -hmm. they're made. Yeah, yeah. So that's like when you jump into like being like bourbon nerd or whiskey nerd, there's so many different processes. So bourbons has to follow the rules to be bourbons. Um, moonshines are basically they're they're corn whiskeys, but their process is way different than a corn whiskey you'd make to become a bourbon. So there's so many different processes to be to be called what you want it to be called, I think. And then like an American whiskey, they, they don't really have much rules. Like this one, it's all barley. And usually to be a bourbon, it'd need to be 51% corn. There's no corn in it whatsoever, but it can still be a whiskey. Yeah, the only thing I remember is like, because when, when I was a kid, like we used to make liquor at home. So we had a kind of like barrel in the backyard and we, we used to make it of like grapes and then uh, um, like cranberries. So we mix them up and then we used to make liquor out of that. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so my, yeah, I mean. Uh, Someone asked where uh, you're from. Yeah, I'm, I'm from India, like from Punjab. It's, a, it's another part of India. Okay. Yeah. So what do you think of Indian whiskeys? Because I don't have a lot of experience with oh. those whatsoever. I find them interesting. Yeah, Indian whiskeys, uh, they, they, they're pretty strong, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, uh, because I, I wasn't like a like big drinker when I was at home. I started drinking mostly after coming to US. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, my dad used to drink a lot like because that's how like they used to make everything at home mm -hmm. and yeah I haven't had like much experience in drinking but my brother he did have a, a lot of experience in drinking <laughs> <laughs> he was my younger brother <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely oh, if you ask him this question he can explain like everything from like like bottom to like how it's made to like how does it taste and how does it feel after you're drunk <laughs> okay that's what so i think i think it's you know globally then like everybody has a brother or a cousin who can be like that's how we make that that's what we're doing back there so <laughs> we definitely know people like that too <laughs> yeah so um whenever someone goes from america like they usually asked to like bring whiskey. Um, mm -hmm. I usually take um, um, either black label or, um, or, or, or bourbons. So they take like big, like three liter or something like that from US to India. And it's okay. like, everyone expects to have a like whiskey whenever someone goes home. So they mm -hmm. to bring something I was like, yeah, I brought some whiskey for you. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah. That's cool. So, and there's so many different profiles of whiskey from even throughout the United States, or you pick one, one state, and there's so many different profiles. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't, this Westland made in Washington State tastes totally different than something made in, I don't know, Indiana or Kentucky. Just, across the board. And Texas whiskey is like a whole different world on its own. 
Yeah, I remember like we tra like, like once we uh, we were doing like um, a trip with my friends and we were in North Carolina, South Carolina. They had like a they were selling whiskey by barrels there. So I believe like they had their own process. and people used to, I believe drink a lot like there. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So like, I've never got into like scotch because it's such a different profile than like bourbons and the whiskeys that I like. And yeah, then it surprises me like when they're like, oh, I, I like scotch too. I'm like, it's such a different taste. And I, I uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, scotch is pretty famous in my community. People love scotch. Yeah, it, it's just, it's a different flavor profile and it's good, I guess, if it's like your acquired taste and you like it. But like bourbon lovers, I'm like, bourbon's sweet, bourbon's nice. And then I'm like, scotch like just kind of punches me in the face and I'm not not a fan of it. <laughs> uh, most Americans, if you're gonna like, a, a, if you don't like typical scotch, then you'd like a non-peated scotch. Yeah, I think it's the peat, like that peatiness is what gets me or I'm like, yeah. that's for me. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. I'll either. tell you. Well, it smells a little bit like a horse stable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll tell you, if, if, if anybody's ever in a Costco, mm -hmm. they have a, it's under the Kirkland brand, but it still has the original um, distiller's name on it. It's a 23-year-old scotch. It's not smoke. It's not, it's not peated. It's not smoky at all, but it's finished for about, I think, a year in a sherry cask. It is phenomenal. And Costco gets like 79 bucks for it. If you found this thing without the Kirkland label on it at a liquor store, it'd be a hundred and a half. Yeah, that yeah. Kirkland label is interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, no, it's, it's well worth every penny. And I'm not a big scotch guy, but. <laughs> I know which one's not. I have to give that a try. Yeah. I think it would be funny or fun, fun, I should say not funny, but just to go buy all the Kirkland brand whiskeys and do a tasting of those, like that scotch and their bourbon, which I've heard is George Dickel, so I don't have high hopes for it, but it would be interesting to just try them all side by side. Yeah, I have uh, some crazy memories with Kirkland because when I came across that whiskey when we were in college, so they are like, um, they, they were whiskey of the like house party for us. Yeah, yeah, like I have certain whiskeys where I'm like, oh, we just take that to parties. Eh? <laughs> That's it. All right, so I'm gonna jump off this recording mm -hmm. and then everybody we can stay and hang out, stay and chat if everybody wants to, but I am gonna stop our recording for